Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the 5 things I hated about architecture school. So last week I did a video where I shared with you the 5 things that I loved about architecture school and now the well, let's say, let's say the dark side of architecture school, the five things that I absolutely hated about it. So let's get started. So the first thing that I absolutely hated about architecture school is that it takes so much of your time. Now, I know, of course, this is going to be your future career. This is what you're going to be doing for your whole life. And yes, architecture is really hard and it takes a lot of your time and effort. But talking to some people in other uh, like universities or in other schools that are majoring in other topics, uh, they basically work half as much or less. So architecture students are known to work uh, like double or triple the time uh, and to spend double or triple the time that other students are spending on their school. And it's really annoying. Not, not only because it's so much time, if, if, if you were learning something new each time and all of the time, it would be probably quite interesting but a lot of it is are a lot of repetitive tasks a lot of things that you don't really need to do but yet, yet you have to because it's just part of what the professors are asking from you so it takes a lot of your time and a lot of that is wasted on like repetitive tasks or learning something that you won't really use at any time in your life I mean we learned so much about like traditional wood constructions that were uh, roof constructions that we're never going to use in our whole entire lives unless we do some sort of reconstruction and for that we can probably learn it but yet we had a whole subject on that that took forever to to learn and to finish and it was really complicated and it took a lot of time so things like that are really annoying Next thing, continuing on with this repetitiveness, is uh, that the masters, at least in my country, is really repetitive. So uh, the first three years, you're basically doing different types of projects. So you start off with some sort of a small conceptual designs on the first year. Then on the second year, you're doing some sort of an architectural main, like architectural project. Then you do some uh, urbanism projects or landscape projects. Then you learn about construction, and uh, you're basically rotating these. Uh, uh, subjects I guess you can say or topics for your uh, studio projects around and you're always learning something new either you're learning something new about uh, urbanism and landscape or you're learning something new about construction and construction methods and construction technology or calculating uh, will the building stand and how thick the the beams must be and the, the columns that's really interesting but then you move on to your masters and you choose your uh, basically your major in my case it was architecture architecture and then you're doing the same project over and over again I mean uh, we did uh uh, for my uh, for my first year of masters, I did first some sort of an educational building, then some sort of a, a jazz center that was also an educational building plus a jazz center. Uh, then uh, we did some sort of a office building that's really similar to the educational building, and then finally I, I had my master thesis project where I talked uh, where I basically created a science center and if you want to check that project out first a link in the description I already have a video where I talk about that project but anyways it's it was really repetitive and basically the end product is really similar all of the time and you're solving the same problems so it was really annoying the fact that the masters was so repetitive it was easier it took a lot less time to work on each project but it was repetitive and I didn't feel like I was learning anything for two years. Moving on, the third really, really, really frustrating and irritating thing is the professor bias. Now, you get different professors for uh, different semesters and different subjects, naturally, I think it's like this everywhere in the world, but each professor has their own bias. Now, this would be okay if it was just a little bit of bias, but it's a whole lot of bias. So, for example, for my first year of master's, I had a professor that's known to, uh, to be like a really conceptual, which is really weird because he his buildings that he constructs in real life are nothing like it. They're really cool actually. They're not that wild and weird. But uh, for all of the projects he asks from his students, they should be extremely wild. So I'm here I'm putting uh, on screen the, uh, the project, what that project looked like. And I didn't really have any rooms. It was an educational 
like building it was a school but yet I didn't really have any rooms I didn't really have any enclosed spaces except for this sphere so it was really weird I didn't really think anything through no parking no anything no stairs or anything like it it was really weird it just looked cool and that was it and that was what's what what was important for that professor then moving on the next semester I had a professor that was really into just doing it basically how you would in real life so it was very technical we have to uh, calculate all of the areas all of the rooms so it was really different now I think it's really important the fact that uh, you learn the different approaches to everything but it can be really annoying when you go from one extreme to the other and you can get kind of confused and lost in the whole process so that was kind of frustrating and annoying and uh, also one more thing that really happens a lot is that students uh, recognize which professor are uh, into which kind of uh, projects and then they can just kind of follow along and just do one path so some of some of them just go to conceptual uh, conceptual professors and others go to like more technical professors and uh, they they never mismatch or they never learn the other side of the coin they just learn about one thing that's uh, interesting to them so that can be kind of uh, kind of annoying and that can be a problem when you finish school and you only know one one side and not the other luckily I, I kind of went on both sides of that so so I kind of learned both another thing is it's extremely expensive to finish architecture school so in my country architecture school is pretty much double or more what other schools cost now uh, it's uh, it's around 2,000 euros per uh, per year which I know if you're in the USA or some somewhere like that you're like that's really cheap and yeah compared to other countries it's cheap but here the average paycheck or average salary is like 500 bucks or less so it's not really cheap compared to Serbian standards and uh, also uh, compared to other universities it's extremely expensive but once you get to the university and if you pay now some students pay some don't the first 200 that get in don't have to pay and then the others have to pay like the other 100 or 200 students that get in but uh, in the first 200 it's like the state pays for your education uh, but that's not all, the only cost now in my case I was like uh, in the first 200 so I didn't really have to pay for school but just the supplies and everything and the models and all of the printing and you have to print a bunch of like drawings each week and it can really rack up it it can uh, really cost a lot and especially when you get to like the exam time and then uh, you hear like students spending like hundreds of dollars each uh, each week on different exams and models and laser cutting and 3d printing and just regular printing and all of that so it can be extremely expensive to finish architecture school uh, and it also really depends on the professor some professors like like more expensive materials and fancy materials and then that can cost even even more and my last annoyance but certainly not the least is there's so much useless things that we do so uh, in, in my school we had uh, something that was like art class it was really like art class in kindergarten so you just do something and they tell you it's okay and then you do something else and then they tell you it's okay and it was like two or three I or maybe it was four semesters I think it, it was so useless we didn't really learn anything it was three hours a week of just useless just nothing we just did nothing so so that was really annoying and it I spent so much time on that on nothing so I'm really annoyed with that and also when you're doing like projects in your architecture studio it takes about uh, it's either one or two sessions of three to five hours a week so it can really rack up it can be like eight hours a week that you spend in in just that class and it's usually just one student talks to the professor and then they rotate and then the other student talks to the professor and, and so on and so forth so you really only need to be there for like 15 minutes that it takes for you to talk to the professor about your project but for some reason we all have to stay inside now I usually kind of just a, a little tip you can just make up an excuse that you kind of have to go somewhere because you have a class that's like separate from school like I don't know you have jujitsu or something like that and then they let you go earlier so that's a cool tip so use that 
Uh, so <laughs> it's it's really annoying. It's it's fun at first because uh, each student has a project that it's wildly different each week so it's interesting to kind of keep track of what everyone else is doing but after a, after a certain time passes you really know what everyone else is doing and they're just solving minor problems and completing their project and you don't really have to stay there and look at that and it takes so much time and also a, a much more like useless uh, useless subjects that you're never going to use in real life or Ever, but you have to take them and it takes so much time so that that's really annoying but anyways like these five things yes they were annoying they are uh, either a waste of time or money but in the end you are an architect and I'm not sorry about that so again as I said the five things that I loved about architecture school so those five things link in the description so check that video out that's kind of part one this is the five parts that I hate Okay, so I think that covers that topic. If you want to go to architecture school, please tell me in the comment section below. Also, if you have maybe some other things that you really hated about your architecture school, also tell me in the description below. And also, does this kind of put you off from going to architecture school? Also, tell me in the comment sections. Okay, make sure to like this video so I know that people like these like architecture school videos. And uh, also make sure to subscribe. I make videos about architecture and but mostly I do Revit tutorials which is really useful so make sure to subscribe for that and I'll be back with another regular Balkan architect Revit tutorial in a few days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.